Hey folks, it's Nick Granville. Welcome to Guitar Daily. So I thought today I'd look at um, this show I've got this weekend. I'm playing a chamber orchestra gig um, with a video game thing. It's called Stardew Valley. Not a game I knew, but um, just preparing for the music. So I thought I'd talk you through kind of how it goes. So they've sent through the music. I have the charts. Um, I'm running them on my iPad. Um, they said there will be hard copies there at the gig on Friday, at the rehearsal Friday show Saturday. I have no idea what we're doing. I know I have to play banjo, so I'm bringing my cheap banjo, which is a cheap, nasty thing. Um, six strings. All right, works. Um, and the rest of it, I'm playing acoustic guitar. So I'll bring the Martin. This will be my acoustic guitar. Bulk of the show I'm playing this, about three quarters on acoustic guitar. That, that, that much I do know. It could be a show where we're playing to pitcher, it could be a show where we're playing to conductor. Um, I don't think there's drum kit, I don't think there's bass. Um, they have sent some MP3s to play along to, so I'm just doing that now. Um, today is Tuesday, the rehearsal's Friday. Um, I have looked through the charts once, but I'm only just now kind of getting to the MP3s with them too. I looked through the charts just, you know, with a uh, pen and bit of paper and sort of made some notes on certain things. So the first thing I do whenever I'm learning new charts and new stuff and preparing for a gig, so I make a list. I play through everything and I make a list of what I need to look at. What's difficult, right? Because the bits that I can already do, I don't need to spend too much time on them. I'll play through them, make sure they're okay, and then maybe I'll check them again once more before the thing, that's it. But the bits that need that are tricky, I'm gonna work on them. Particularly in this chart, here's one here. Look at that line at the bottom. That's crazy hard. Check it out. It goes. I think I got that right. Oh. It goes. Right, it's pretty pretty tricky. So that's a bit I'm going to focus on and kind of look at. Can I get it? Um, you know, work just isolate that little bit. Put the metronome on. I know that's going to be at 92 beats per minute, so it's about that tempo I was playing there. But I'm going to slow that right down. I'm just going to isolate it. I'm going to change any bits that suit me. Um, there's a couple of bits in there where notes are doubled and just no point. Um, a lot of times the people who are writing these are piano players, so they might be able to go like that with a whole lot of notes. You just can't do that on guitar. And this is a non-cutaway guitar, so it really makes that G note tricky to get to. You know, um, I'll play you through a little bit of that. I'm probably going to get a copyright strike for this, um, which kind of sucks, but that's how it goes. Um, I'll start from the top, and I'll just show you. It's really pretty music. Um, yeah, if I get a copyright strike, well, so be it. Um, but I'll play you through it and just show you. This is just me. This is the second time I've played this. Like I said, I've looked at it once already. Um, you know, just with without the music now, I've got the MP3. I've played through it once with the MP3. Um, this is the one called Season Sweet Fall. Just to give you an idea of how I'm, I would approach something like this. So go from the beginning. Four bars rest. Three, two, three, four, four, and I'm in. bars rest so I'm counting it in my head three two three four four two So that bit there had optional up an octave. Um, it's not going to happen on this guitar, non-cutaway guitar, right? So here I've got 12 bars rest. We're at bar five, six, two, three, four. This is what I'm counting in my head to myself. 
fourth bar, letter D. Four bars rest and then I come in. Three, four, and this is forte. Now I had that note over the page, but I wrote it across so I don't have to be reading it. And I've got four bars rest here, two, three, four. Now this is letter F, we've got four bars rest and we're coming. I'll kind of find my position of where I'm gonna be playing. One, two, three. I'm thinking about the tail ends of notes when I play come off on notes as much as I'm thinking about the note itself. Off. One, two, three. One, two, three. And didn't nail that very well, so I'll have another look at that later. We've got three bars rest here, and I know I'm going to be up in this position. Two, three, four, four, coming up to letter I. So I've got eight bars here. Two, two, three, four, three. This is what's going through my head. Four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. I can skip the page so I know what's going on. All right, come up to letter J, which is my entry. Okay. K, so I know I've got three bars. Two, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, two, two, three. That'll be conducted. There's a conductor on this gig. New tempo. Two, three, four. And here's the bit. Twelve bars, so you can see that's killer. I'm gonna have to work on getting that smooth. It's really hard. Three, four, four, two, three. This will all be conducted. Three, four. Which makes it so much easier when you have someone doing that. You just I was I play one along with MP3s and I kind of go. Ah. Whereas there's no doubt when there's a conductor. So I do split vision, reading the music plus looking at the conductor above. Right, and here's my entry at letter O. Three. really pretty. Pretty. Nice music. And here's the melody line. Ah. I should stop talking. <laughs> Nice, isn't it? Who knew video games had such nice music? I can talk over these bits because they're repetitive. So that'll all be conducted for the writs and all the stuff like that. So you get the idea. That's kind of how a lot of the gig goes. Um, do you need to read music to be a musician? 
I don't think so. Um, George Benson probably doesn't read music. Lots of success. John Schofield probably doesn't read music that great. Um, for the stuff I do, you know, session musician, um, backing, sideman gigs, yeah, I do because I do orchestra stuff, you know. Um, I do theatre shows. Those are reading gigs. These sorts of things I do. But um, And the whole whole show is all, oops, is all charts. What have I done? You see what I mean? Um, and there's a bunch of challenges in this stuff. Um, but, you know, you get the usually get the stuff beforehand. It's not usually expected that I'd have to sight read something like this. I'd usually come in and I would, you know, I'd maybe have it a week before. And this one, we had it like maybe two or three weeks before. Um, I've left it to the last minute um, only because I know I can read and I know that I'm, you know, most of the stuff. I did look through it and, and kind of went, okay, there's a couple of bits there, but for the, the bulk of it, I'm going to be able to just do this. I knew there was MP3s there, which really helps. Um, I wish they'd always send mp3s and then you kind of got a um, a reference because to me it's like you know people think reading uh, music is just you read what it says on the page that's not musical that's bullshit <laughs> nobody does that no even like the greatest classical musicians in the world who who read like all the time they don't just blindly read what it says on the page they make music from what it says on the page and that's what I'm trying to do so when I have a recording it's now I have a reference for Oh, that's a, what the violins are doing there. That's what the clarinet's doing here. I've been making notes like, um, you know, double with the clarinet here and that sort of stuff. So I know who I'm listening out for and what I'm who I'm trying to phrase with, where we're cutting notes off to get all that sort of stuff. The other thing I do too is I, I will often write in chords. You see there I wrote in that's an F chord and a C chord. I remember Adam Goldsmith talking about this, you know, the great London session player. And he said, um, there's no point trying to be a hero. Write the chord in then you just can't go wrong. <laughs> right, well you can go wrong, you can play the wrong chord, but that's only your own dumb fold at that point. But I thought that's the way it is, don't be a hero, write the chord in, you know what I mean, if you need to. If it's like it's really obvious or it's not a chord that makes sense, because sometimes, you know, like I said, piano players will play something and then you're expected to play it back. You know, that can be different, but um, I hope you've kind of enjoyed this, sort of a look behind the scenes of preparing for my gig on Friday. Um, I might take you along to uh, kind of see some of the rehearsal, if I can get away with it. Um, yeah, I'll show you my setup for acoustic guitar and all that kind of stuff. Sort of a vlog type thing, maybe. Anyway, hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.